As you know, we typically don't use the massing environment in project except for conceptual modeling, playing with forms or generating ideas. However, there's an interesting way we can use it to create topography. And actually, the results are quite impressive. Let's take a look at how it works. To start, we need to create a massing environment. You can either go to Massing and Site tab and create an in-place mass with this icon. Or you can go to Architecture tab and create a model in place with this mass category. Okay. There's also the third option. You can go to File, New, Conceptual Mass and create a metric mass environment here. Then we need to set the unit. Press U and go to Length section and switch units to meters, rounding to two decimal places. Next, we need to go to first level and create references. If you look at this part, we have a few different types of lines. Model line, reference line, and reference plane. We're going to use this one. I'm going to create four lines in here. Two in this side and two more on the other side. Let's also add one line in here, another one in this part to control the dimension on the other side too. After this, we are going to use dimensions to set them exactly in the center to make the spaces, the gap between them equal. I'm going to click on all of these, click outside and then make them equal. For these two parts, I'm going to do the same, make them equal and let's move them inside this part. Okay. Or you can move these lines up. Let's also create another dimension to check the actual dimension between these two parts, 69 and 65. This is okay. Next thing we need to do is to name all of these references because we are going to create our line, our shape in one of these elevations. For example, this is the elevation and to create each line in its reference plane, on each one of these references, we need to know the name, okay? So I'm going to start with this part. Let's call this one A, the other one B. You just need to click on lines, and then this is the left, right, center line. In here, you need to click on this, click to name. This is going to be C, and the last one will be D, okay? Then we are going to go to this elevation, this east elevation, and we need to set the work plane. Right now, the work plane is set on this left, right, okay? If you create anything on this view, it will be created on this part, but we want to create them on each one of these lines. So we need to go to east view, and in here, we're going to set the work plane. In this part, with the first option, you can see all of the references that we created. I'm going to choose this reference plane A and then click on OK. Now we are going to create our shape between these two parts. If you want to see if you have selected the reference plane correctly, you can click on this show. Let me turn this off and next we are going to use this model line. We're going to create our shape with this option and with SP line because I want to have curvy lines in here. The first part, I will create it between these two lines and at the base in this first level. I'm going to start from this part to here, something like this to this part. Press escape. And after that, if you want to change the shape, you can use these handles to fix it like this. Okay, this is the first part. For a second one, I want to create it a little bit about this one because I want to have kind of a slope in here too. I'm going to start from this part to here, something like this to this part. Okay, press escape. And now you can change the placement a bit more this way. Okay, let me move it to here, much better. Go to set set work plane this time we are going to go with left right and click on ok with this sp line i'm going to start creating it again a little about those lines to here this time i'm going to add a little bit more curves this way 
the way you create all of these parts these curves just depends on you if you want to have a very bumpy surface you can add curves as much as you need if you don't want that you can just make them smoother this way so close to each other i'm going to go back with the shape i had and then for the next part let's set the work plane on reference plane c click on ok and the desk line i'm going to create it in this part okay something like this then i'm going to move it to these parts okay and for the last part i'm going to go again to set work plane to reference plane d click on ok and the desk line i'm going to create my shape this way in here okay this is looking good then we are going to go to 3d view and in here we can see how they are placed you see the slope if this is too much and you don't want to have a sharp slope like this you can just create more gaps between these reference lines you can go to first level and in here select these references just one of them because they are all connected and then move them make a space between them a little bit more like this if you go to 3d view you will see that it is a bit smoother okay now i'm going to turn this show work plane off and after that we are going to turn these shapes into forms to do that you just need to select each one of them and then from this create form you're going to click on this solid form and this is the first form we created our topography will look like this if you face with error if you face with warning in this part if you was unable to connect all of these shapes together you need to know that you have to create enough space enough gap between each part of these okay also if your form if your shape on each one of these parts are very different and maybe they are very bumpy very sharp Revit can't actually create those okay because it needs enough space to connect all of these parts together smoothly okay so if you face with warnings play with these forms move these shapes next to each other make them smoother create more gaps between them until you can create it this way okay so this is our surface as you can see we have this slope in here it is a smooth enough but if you want you can even make it a smoother you just need to move those reference plane and play with those shapes that we created now if everything is okay you can load it into your project i'm going to click on this load into project and now you can place it in here on the first level the reason we can see just some parts of it is because it is about the first level it is about the view range i'm going to place it exactly in the center in this part and if you want to see it you can go to 3d view in here you can see the placement from this back view you see it is about this first level so we can see just some parts of it now this is the mass environment this is the mass surface we have in here let me also hide these levels category okay to turn it into a topography we need to go to massing and site section in here we need to use this topo solid to turn this surface into an actual topography Okay. I'm going to click on this topo solid and then first we need to click on this create topo solid. Then we are going to select the surface, select the mass and then hit enter. And then you need to wait a few seconds to see your form and here we have it. If I select it, you can rotate around it and you can see all of these parts. Let me turn this shadow on put this on fine and consistent color so we can see all of its parts if you don't want to see these gray sections these parts on your topography you need to turn this show mass form and floor off so now we can see just the face like this this is so clean and smooth you see these contour lines in here if you want to change the forms we have in this part at the beginning or at the end you can go back to the mass environment and change those shape change those profiles you created 
I'm going to go back to this east view. In here, if you want to change them, you can select them. For example, this one, this one in here, you can click on this edit profile and then you can move these parts like this, make like this, add even more curves in here, in this part, maybe it might be a bit harder to create them. It might take a little bit more time, but if this is what you want, you can do this. I'm going to hit finish. And if we go to 3D view in here, you can see another form. If this is what you like, you can again load it. Or if you want to change it even more, you can go back to East view and this time change another part. For example, this one, I'm going to move this part up, maybe this part down, hit finish. If we go to 3D view, we have a shape like this in here and I'm going to load this again into the project. Let's use this second option. However, we didn't change anything. And if we go to 3D view and turn this show mask on, we will see another form. If you want to turn this into topography, again, you need to delete this one and click on this topo solid. Select your surface, create topo solid, select your surface, and then hit finish. And then you will have a new topography. I'm going to go to massing and side and turn this off so we can see these parts better. This way in here we have somehow flat surface, which is interesting. And I really like how smooth all of these parts are looking. If you zoom in and turn the thin line off, you will see contour line and the primary lines in here too. Okay, these are the primary lines and these are the contour lines. You can control them separately too. For example, if you want to change the color, if you want to change the pattern, you can just simply go to visibility and graphic and change them. To do that, press VV on your keyboard and then go to topo solid section. And in this section on topo solid, not topography because we have the same contour lines. In these two parts for topography we have primary contour secondary contour and we have the same for topo solid secondary contour and primary contour for this part for secondary contour for example let's go to this part we can change the pattern in here for example maybe this one dashed lines and for its color we can go with dark green however it is a little bit tricky to see them and these patterns but you can do this and also you can change its weight to this one for example click on ok and ok again so in here if you zoom in you can see the color of this secondary line is changed right this is on black and this is on the dark green that we set the reason that you can't see the pattern is because you need to first change the scale in here to one by one something like this and after that if you zoom in enough you see these dashed lines in these parts right because we have a lot of curves on the surface you can see them that way and also you can do the same for the primary contour lines too if you go to visibility and graphic in here press t to go there quickly on this topo solid section for this primary color, you can go to override and change the same pattern, color, and weight to the setting to the cell that you want. Also, for controlling these lines even more, you can select the topography, topo solid, and go to edit type section. In here, we have this contour line display. Here, you can set a range in this part with a start and a stop, and also you can change the subcategory. You can insert even more lines to these parts to like fill these sections between them with the range that you want. And also you can change the setting in visibility and graphic as I showed. Okay, so this is how you can create a very interesting site for your project. If you want to use this on an actual project, if you want to place your building in here, you can either go back to this part and create some flat surface in here and then load it back in 3d view you can select it also you can use this update to face you don't need to delete it and assign it again to the topo solid 
in mass you can just simply use this update or you can link this file as a revit link in this section with this option we have in here okay since we created this topography based on mass environment we don't have those options to excavate some of these parts and and create flat surface to place our building so this is the option that you can use go back to that mass environment and create flat spaces another thing that i wanted to share with you is an update about the course so i just finished recording the last chapter but i decided to add a workshop to this course to test everything we learned in these 30 chapters in practice in a very interesting project so if you're interested in learning more about this course make sure to check the link in the description and you are more than welcome to join us see you next time